you get to at the end of the day. Okay, so you must start with carbon and it must go to carbon plus 4 or 4 plus, it doesn't matter. Okay, so it's not 4 plus to 4 plus. You start with carbon, it must go to carbon 4 plus. And how do we do that? Does it gain electrons or does it give electrons away? It gives away. Okay, so it gives away electrons, meaning it's one of the products. It's something that is given away to something else. So plus 4 electrons okay not e4 minus four electrons okay sharp the next one magnesium to magnesium two plus how does that happen it gives away two electrons calcium must go to calcium two plus how does it do that two electrons potassium to potassium plus one gives away one electron. Yes. Oh, that's fine. Two plus two, uh, two plus three, and three plus two. It's the same thing. Um. All right. Now I didn't pick it up. Maybe I've missed it, but you might. Watch a YouTube video or you might have another textbook or extra classes somewhere. And they say you can write, I'm going to uh, take calcium now. They say you can write calcium minus two electrons gives you calcium two plus. Okay, That is actually correct. It's not wrong. So if you remove two electrons, it becomes two plus. But the reason why I write it down like this is in the trick they expect you to write it down like this. Okay, so in grade 10 and 11, you can write minus two electrons. And then come grade 12, you cannot write minus two electrons. So um, I don't want to confuse you. I don't want to teach you two methods. And then grade 12, you're not allowed to use the one method. So I only teach you this way. The other way is not wrong. Okay, so if you do it in exam, you'll get your marks. But just now I'm preparing you for grade 12. Okay, so there's a reason why I'm doing it like this. Okay, if we go to the anions, the negative ions, so we must go from brome to bromide the ion. How, does you, how do you do that? You gain an electron, you get an electron. If you go from oxygen, so oxygen 2 minus, you gain two electrons. From sulfur to sulfur ion, you gain two electrons. From nitrogen to nitrogen ion, you gain two to uh, three electrons. Okay. Any questions? There anything that I must explain or why or? Okay. So something you should have picked up. If it becomes a cation, a positive ion, then it loses the electrons. Then it's always on the right hand side. And if something becomes an anion, a negative ion, it always gains electrons. So it's always on the left hand side. Okay. Next one is the ionization energies. Okay, so ionization energy for a sweetie. Can someone tell me what is the definition? You don't have to give it word for word, but more or less, what's the definition for ionization energy? Yes. Your hand was up? No? Are you bailing out? Bordley? The energy needed to be moved in that from an ion. From? The energy needed to form an ion. To the ion. Yeah, but wait. Um. Okay, yeah, yeah. scratch, scratch, go again. The energy. No, you can't read. No. Shh, don't shout. Because you're reading, you are out. You guys are saying it and then you just stop. Um, Relo? Yes. 
as easy as that. So, oi. so it's the energy needed required to remove an electron from an atom or from a neutral atom. Okay, now. Before I read the questions, I look at the table. I consider the table. I take it apart. You do that always in science. You don't say, oh, okay, table, table, and then you go to the question. What does the table tell you? You see that you have lithium, beryllium, sodium, magnesium. I look to the periodic table. Where do I find them? Lithium is in group one. Beryllium in group two. Sodium in group one. Magnesium in group two. What does that mean? What does that tell me? It means lithium has one valence electron beryllium has two sodium has one magnesium has two what does that mean sorry i'm quickly going to interrupt myself i think the two of you got a sweetie the other day and you left the papers on my desk yes you did because i asked yes, Relo about to mellow someone I that, yeah. no i picked it up no no there was two papers there and one paper there there was two I don't say I'm a liar, that happened. Just one minute. It I must go in the rubbish bin. Where are you here? Yes, but it's not letting me Alright, anyway. So, what does that mean for me? When I say one valence electron, two valence electron. It means one valence electron in the whole energy level. So it will easily remove that electron. Easily give it away. So when we say easily, that's not a scientific term. You can't write in your answer, it will easily remove an electron. What does it mean easily? It means it requires, it needs less energy or little energy to remove an electron. Okay? This one has two valence electrons. We can see now that the energy increases. Why? It will be difficult to remove the first electron because it's paired. Okay? So it will require more energy to remove the first electron. But if we look at the second ionization energy, the energy required to remove the second electron, we can see now beryllium will require less. Why? Because it was first paired. If you remove the one, then you have one valence electron left. So then it will easily or it will require less energy to remove the second one. Okay? But if you look at lithium, um, second ionization energy is very high. Why? If we look at lithium, <coughs> um, it has one S, two S, it had three electrons to start with. So to remove that valence electron will require little energy. But to remove the second electron will require a lot of energy. Why? Because the second one um, is in the first energy level. Energy level is complete. Orbitals are full. Valence electrons are paired. So it will require a lot of energy to remove that one. Where for beryllium, it will not because it will still have one electron left in the second energy level. Can you see, this is all the um, interpreting I did, interpreting the levitation, I did before I read the questions. I expect you to do the same in a test. Okay. Right, now I get to the questions. I understand what's going on in the table. I read the questions. I ask which two elements have the lowest ionization energy. This is just reading off the table. Which one? Okay, there's beryllium, there's magnesium, beryllium, magnesium. Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. Sorry. I see there's a mistake. I think from the Afrikaans to the English there's a mistake. Let me just check there. Yes, there is a mistake. Sorry, sorry. Which two have the lowest first ionization energy? Sorry, sorry, sorry. So there's a mistake. Which two has the lowest first ionization energy? So I'm only looking at this here. And that will be lithium and sodium. Okay, now... How can I make this question more difficult in a test? I can say, instead of saying which two elements, I can say, give the symbol of the elements or give the name of the elements. So if I ask you which two elements, give the name, then you must write out lithium, sodium. If you give me the symbols, you don't get any marks. All right. Next question. 
how many electrons is lithium likely to lose when it reacts with other substances? Justify your answer with data from the table. Now, this question can um, count three or four marks. Okay, so I'm going to explain where do you get your marks. So, if we look at lithium there, we see the first ionization energy is low, the second one is high, meaning it is most likely to lose one electron. Okay, so that's your first mark if you say one or write the letter out one. Then justify your answer from the data with the data from the table. So what did we see there? We saw the first ionization energy is quite low and the second ionization energy is high. Okay, so it means we say um, the first ionization energy is low. Okay, now, so that's what you read from the table. Now you must interpret, explain what that means. Okay, you read from the table, but now you must interpret. First ionization energy is low, that means what? Um... Thus, it requires or it needs um, little energy to remove the first electron. Okay, so for that you get two more marks. You say... You, what you read from the table, the first ionization energy is low. And then you interpret, you explain what that means. You say it requires very little energy to remove the first electron. You don't say, thus, it's easy to remove the first electron. Easy is not a scientific word. If it counts four marks, then you add the next one. You say um, the second ionization energy is high. Thus, it will not remove or lose um, a second electron. Karabu, must you wear glasses? Where's your glasses? Say again. Not here, you don't have glasses, but you need glasses. Someone else that needs glasses, Rello? <laughs> Meaning you need glasses. <laughs> Guys, it's very important if you need glasses. Someone else. You also need glasses. Nie verseker me. With money that I found way. But I will ask if, I, I, if people know people that can help you. Some be with you as well. Have your parents ever taken you to get your eyesight checked? I'm not asking primary, I'm asking parents. Parents? Okay. So, did they take you? Someone take you? No. Not yet. Will your parents take you? Have you asked them? Then you must first ask, you say, hello, I can't see in class, help me. Have you asked? You're going today. Hallelujah. Good. Hey. Because you what? But did you ask her to take you? Maybe ask again. Ask again, ask again, ask again. Okay, because if I ask someone to help you, they say, what have the learner done themselves? And if I say nothing, they're going to say, but 
if they're not willing to help themselves, how, why must we help them? The same thing in class. You can ask for extra classes, man, but you never do your homework, you don't listen in class, blah, blah, blah. Go, life goes both ways. Okay? Shop? All right. Um, okay, next one. Beryllium and magnesium have a low second ionization energies. What does this imply? Imply means mean. What does it imply about these two elements? Okay, right. Um, now, in the Afrikaans class, I did pick up that there was a confusion about this question. What I am trying to get to is the next chapter. So this question, I actually mean, what does this imply about these two elements regarding bonds? Okay. And I pick up in the Afrikaans class, they thought regarding um, electrons. So I'm asking regarding bonds. Okay, so, beryllium and magnesium have low second ionization energies. What does that mean? It means um, they require, require, need less energy to remove the second electrons thus they will give two electrons away when they bond something then they ask which of magnesium and beryllium is likely to be more reactive element justify your answer from the data in the table so if we compare beryllium with magnesium we see in both instances magnesium has a lower ionization energy lower ionization energy means it needs less energy to react it needs less energy to give away an electron so it's easier so which one is more reactive it will be magnesium justify your data from uh, your answer with the data from the table we're going to say um both it's first and second ionization energy is lower okay so that's what i read from the table again this one will count three marks sorry so your answer then what do i read from the table i saw they're both lower then what does it mean if it's both lower you must interpret the data so it's both lower thus it requires less energy to remove an electron so it is more reactive Go back to your notes and we're going to go to electron affinity electron affinity now electron affinity is basically the inverse of ionization energy the opposite of ionization energy i'm going to read and then explain it says the electron affinity of an element is the quantity of energy that is released 
release means given off or given away. Release is given off or given away. The energy that is released when an electron is added to a neutral atom in the gas phase. Okay, so ionization energy is the energy that is needed to remove an electron. Uh, electron affinity is the energy that is given off when you gain an electron. Okay, so it's the opposite. Okay, so if you look here, this is not this is a bond, but it's the same idea. If I want to break them apart, if I want to remove this, I need to apply energy to remove it. Now, if it is like this, then it is unhappy because it's unpaired, it's not full. So when it forms that bond. When you add an electron, then it's like, now I'm perfect. Now I have my, I found my someone, now it gives off energy. Okay? It is like in life, now this is just a generalization. I'm not pinpointing to anyone. I'm not saying you must feel the same way. This is just a story to help remember it. Okay? In life, when you are on your own, you are um, uh, uh, unstable. You're always busy looking to find someone here, looking to find someone there. You know people like that? You know, they're always finding someone to help them to be complete. Okay? And when they find some, that someone, they're like, now I can chill, now I give off the energy. Okay? You're not like that, Sebo? <laughs> Everyone was looking at someone. It's this all right. Okay, okay. I didn't give any names, guys. Chill. So, um, so this is to help you remember. So that when they're separate, when they're on their own, they're unstable. Okay. And then when they find someone, when they get paid the electrons, then they they become stable. They give off energy. Okay. Are you with me? Right. So electron affinity is the energy that is given off. When it gains an electron, and then it forms a negative ion, or it forms an anion. An anion, you can see that from the general equation, you don't need to know this off by heart. You actually have done this for homework. We have an element in the gas phase, G stands for gas phase, and it gains an electron. It becomes an anion, a negative ion, and then it releases energy, gives off energy. In the electron, um, affinity, electron affinity gives away that energy. Okay, we are again going to draw three um, atoms. We're going to draw lithium, nitrogen, and fluorine. Lithium, nitrogen, and fluorine. They're all in the second energy level. Okay, lithium has how many electrons? Three. One, two, three. Nitrogen has? Fluorine? Nine. Right, so if you look at those three atoms, okay, and there's an electron floating around somewhere close to them, which one will grab that electron on the fastest with the strongest force? It will be fluorine. 
Why? Fluorine is the closest to being perfect. It's the closest to having all its electrons paid and all its orbitals full. So fluorine would like to take that electron the, the, the most, so it will grab that electron with the biggest um, force and then it will be relaxed. It will give, be like, and finally, I'm full. So it will give off the most energy. If nitrogen were to take that one electron, it will not give off so much energy. It will give off a bit, but one electron is not um, uh, sufficient enough for it to complete its entire energy level. It actually needs three electrons. So if this one gets one and this one gets one, fluorine will give off the most energy because it is perfect. Nitrogen will not give off that much energy because it's not perfect yet. Lithium is so far from being perfect, it actually doesn't want that one electron. Okay? Lithium actually wants to remove its electron. So lithium there well, from, of all three, it will not give off a lot of energy because when it gains one electron, it still needs to find six other electrons. Okay, so we can see this one is the closest, closest to being perfect. That means gives off most energy when electron is found. So closest to being perfect, meaning it gives off the most energy when electron is found, when you get that one electron for it to be perfect. Okay. And that coincides, that checks in with, that is the same as the table here below, ach, the graph. Now again, that graph, I don't expect you to know it off by heart. Okay, the graph, if I give you a similar graph, I expect you to be able to interpret it, to read information from it. Okay, so if we look at this graph, you can see there, it goes up and down, up and down a bit. But in general, if we look at fluorine, chlorine, bromine, they are all the halogens. They have the highest electron affinity. Why? Because they desperately want that one electron to be perfect. So they give off the most energy when they find that electron. You can see here helium, neon, argon, krypton, the noble gases. They does not they don't give off any energy because they don't want an electron at all okay then you check the lithium sodium potassium the halo uh, the alkali metals group one they have very low ionization energy uh, um, electron affinities compared to fluorine why because they don't want to take an electron they actually want to give away an electron Are you with me okay I can ask a question like in period three, then you check period three, go from sodium to argon. Where do I find it here? From sodium to argon there. So from sodium to argon, which one will have the greatest electron affinity? Then you see it's chlorine. Why? Because chlorine needs one electron for its electrons to be paired, orbitals to be filled, so it releases the most energy when it receives an electron. You get it? Yes. Okay. So, so here at the bottom, it just says in a group, so group is up and down, the uh, uh, electron affinity decreases from top to bottom in a group. Why does that happen? Because the molecule becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay? And we know, like a long distance relationship, if you are far away from the nucleus, the attraction force is not that great. Okay, so if it is a very big molecule, then the protons are very far away from the outside electrons, meaning it will not attract another electron so, so well, okay, with a big force. If it is a small electron uh, um, atom like fluorine, then it's very close, then it will attract an electron much better. So the higher up you are in a group, the bigger the electron affinity. Okay, and then 
that in a period, so in a row, the electron affinity increases from left to right because you know the, no, ach, the metals is very small and the non-metals becomes very big, their electron affinity, how much they want an electron. Yes? Yes. All right, and here's what I explained at the beginning. I said atoms strive for the lowest possible energy state, so they want to be relaxed. Okay? Therefore, non-metals with a high electron affinity are chemically, chemically the most reactive. Meaning, if we look here, between, uh, let's go from fluorine, I just want to check, if we go compare fluorine with, say, hydrogen, fluorine is all the way to the right and has the highest electron affinity, meaning really wants one electron so it will react the fastest if there is an electron they will take it so it's more reactive okay right then the next idea is the atomic and ionic radius <coughs> okay it says there it is difficult to measure the atomic radius of a single atom therefore use is made of covalent bonding um, radius of the bond in uh, of an atom in a bond. No, covalent bonding. You don't know the word covalent just yet. We will discuss it in the next chapter. But what that basically means is the following. Atoms are not balls. Atoms actually look like clouds. Okay? So if we look outside, there's a lot of clouds today. If I tell you, oh, look, 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 there's a cloud that looks like a bunny. Have you ever looked at clouds long enough to find pictures? There's a cloud that looks like a bunny. And then I go call you to come look at my bunny. And then when you come there, it doesn't look like a bunny anymore. Because the cloud moved. Right? So clouds are continuously moving, changing shape. The same thing with an atom. The electrons move like this and like this and like this and whatever. So when we look at an atom, we don't see there goes the electron. We actually just see a cloud. It looks actually like candy floss. No candy floss? Okay, it looks like that. So you just see this cloud of something, okay, because it changes shape the whole time. Then, there you'll see the atom, then it looks like this, then it looks like that, then it looks like this, then it looks... So it changes shape the whole time. We say there's a cloud of electrons. So for me to determine the length, the size, the radius of an atom is very difficult because it changes the whole time. So what they do is they look when it bonds with another atom. So... The two atoms bond with each other, and when they bond, their orbitals overlap. Okay. Now the orbitals, the cloud, still changes shape the whole time as it moves, but what stays constant is the two nuclei. Okay. So the core stays the same. Then what we do is we measure the distance from the one core to the next, so the decentral distance, and then we cut it in half to get the radius of the one more or less it's not an exact number it's a more or less number okay so to determine the radius we cut that in half and we say that there is the radius half of it is the radius okay right now, if we look at the radius, I first want to look at this periodic table here on the right-hand side. As you can see, if we go down a group, it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And the guy showed this in the video. He said, we add another shell. I told you shell is an orbital. We add another energy level, orbital, and it goes bigger and bigger and bigger. So as you go down, period 1, 2, 3, 4, blah, energy level 1, 2, 3, you add more orbitals, it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. What you must understand is it goes smaller from left to right. Okay. Now, why does it become smaller, man? Because we add a proton and an electron. We add a proton and an electron. We add a proton and an electron. So, shouldn't it become bigger or something? Okay. What I want to look at is, you remember you, uh, we left the page, a few things open here. Okay, I want to go there. If we compare... Um, the next one you can divide into three. I want to compare lithium with boron with fluorine.
Okay. They're all in energy level 2. So I have 1S, 2S. Okay, now what I want you to do is here at the bottom, also lithium, boron, fluorine. Here we have um, No, wait, there's never to anything. Okay, so I'm just drawing circles. I know the orbitals actually make those loopy loops. I just want to show something. Okay. Lithium has how many electrons? Three. One, two, three. Boron has? Five. five. One, two, three, four, five. Fluorine? Okay, now if I go copy that into the other orbitals, the structure of what it looks like. We know lithium has three protons, so three positive things at the bottom. And then it has three electrons. One, so in the first energy level it has two electrons. So one, two, Right, three. Boron has five protons, five positive things. It has one, two in the first energy level. And the second energy level, it has one, two, three. Fluorine. It has nine positive things, nine protons, and then it has one, two. Can I zoom into a fluorine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine. Okay. So, what I want you to see, they're all in the same period. They're all in period two. So, you can see when we added shells, when you added orbitals, when I go from left to right on the period, I didn't add more orbitals. From left to right, I didn't add more orbitals. Okay? They were there. So, I didn't make them bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. What I did do is I filled the orbitals more. So, I filled these orbitals more. Okay. Now, when that happened, I added more protons and I added more electrons. Okay. So, this is like having a, a magnet. So, this is the energy and this more... Okay, so if 
it's like having a weak magnet, a small magnet, and then I make this magnet a bit stronger, but I didn't make it bigger. I just made the magnet stronger, and then I make the magnet stronger. How did I make it stronger? I made the positive bigger, and I made the negative bigger. I made the positive bigger, I made the negative things bigger. What do we know for positive and negative? That attract. So here we can see there's three positive, three negatives. They will attract each other. Here we have five positive, five negative. They will attract each other more. So when they attract each other more, it's like the, uh, the atom becomes smaller. They're closer together. This one is nine and nine. So it's a bigger magnet, so they will attract each other more. Okay, so that is why when you go from left to right in a period, even though we didn't add more orbitals or anything like that, the atom becomes smaller and smaller and smaller because the attraction force becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. You with me? Okay, so when we go to your notes, there, you can actually see when we go from left to right in a period, it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, shop. Yeah. Right. So here on the left hand side, I gave you a graph again. As you can see, the radius increases the whole time. So again, I can ask say in period two, period two is from lithium to neon. In period two, which one will have the biggest radius? Which one have the smallest one? Neon. Which group in general have the biggest radius? Group one, the alkaline metals. In general, which one will have the smallest one? The noble gases. Right, you get it? Yes. I can ask from here, give me the tendency, tendency is a pattern of um, uh, the atomic radius um, when you go from left to right in a group. You must, uh, in a period, you must have like that. when I go from left to right in a period, the radius decreases. What happens in a group when I go from top to bottom in a group? It increases. Okay, you have it? So here at the bottom, I explained it thoroughly. I say when you go in a group, you go from top to bottom, then it increases the radii. So that's a plural of radius. Radius becomes radii. It increases from top to bottom in a group. Why? Because we add an energy level the whole time. We add a shell. We add an orbital. So there where it says energy level, you can say orbital or you can say shell. You add an energy level, orbital or a shell. Okay, then I'm going to read and then explain. The increasing number of full electron orbitals, so increasing full electron orbitals between the nucleus and the valence electrons, between the nucleus and the valence electrons have a screening effect. You can also say it has a shielding effect effect a screening or a shielding effect screening or a shielding effect causing the attraction force of the nucleus on the valence electrons to weaken Okay. What does that mean? If I compare, and I know you're getting very irritated with lithium, lithium with um, potassium. I just choose lithium because it's so small, so it's easy to draw. Lithium has three valence electrons. Okay, so now how I'm going to draw this is like this. Three protons. I just want to show something here. Yeah? And potassium is 19. And it's an energy level 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. 
Okay. Lithium has three electrons. One, two, three. Potassium has 19. One, two. Then it goes three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, You can get away with it, but you can't. Your homework is on page 11. Page 11, you can fill it on there. It's one question. So you fill in no, sodium, magnesium, blah, blah, blah. 